Today we are going to be talking about seven different actionable and attainable ways that you can go about making money within the stock market. Now I spend a lot of time going over different topics such as how to manage risk, how to find the best stocks, how to set monkey levels of support, and of course, how to use different indicators and studies. But my goal with this video is to give you seven straightforward and actionable ways that you can immediately go out there and start making more money in the stock market. But I do recommend that you watch the entirety of this video because I'm going to be putting one of the most important ways last, and you'll only really understand it if you watch the entirety of this video. Anyways, in return, all I ask of you is that you hit that beautiful and ravishing like button and also don't forget to subscribe if you see value in the following video. Okay, so tip number one is perhaps the most straightforward and that is to simply trade quality stocks that have a consistent uptrending pattern. This is something that you can do regardless of your skill level and the amount of capital that you have in your brokerage. To do this, simply scan and create a list of say 20 stocks that have an overall uptrending pattern and then simply wait and buy in when they have a pushback. Very few stocks have a consistent uptrended pattern without pushbacks. So you will find stocks on this list of 20 that will have enough pushback to take advantage of. Now this works for both intraday and swing positions. Strategy behind this is that by doing this repeatedly, you can profit off the recovery from the pushback as well as reap the rewards from the overall uptrend. For example, with NVDA, we have the overall consistent uptrend, but we also have these polarized periods of overselling and then recovery. This allows us to buy in when it's oversold and write the price action back to overbought and then keep riding the consistent uptrend until we do see those early warning signs of a reversal. In fact, just buying in an oversold and holding out until overbought in NVDA would have netted you a $40 a share return and that's not even including the rest of the ride. Another example would be CRM or Salesforce. CRM offered many pushback below fair value entry points, but more importantly, it had a pattern of overselling and overbuying. And the beauty is that since we have an overall general uptrend, buying in at oversold and selling out at overbought would have always been a good idea if you trace back over the price action. And of course, this happens intraday as well. But the key here is that this consistent uptrend gives us the overall direction boost as the stock may be oversold in the moment, but its overall direction is pointing up, so that makes it a lot more simple to trade, whereas with a stock that's pointing down, rapid pushbacks aren't going to be recovering into higher highs. Whoops, the monkeys are messing with our image quality. But anyways, the key here is that with this consistent uptrend, we get the overall direction boost as the stock may be oversold in the moment, but its overall direction is pointing up, so that makes it a lot more simple to trade, whereas with a stock that is pointing down, rapid pushbacks aren't going to be recovering into higher highs. Stocks that have an overall upward direction and a history of making pushbacks along the uptrend are much more likely to continue providing opportunities to buy in at a discount and allow you to continue riding the price action upwards. And thus, focusing on finding stocks that do have this consistent uptrending pattern is a great way to make more money trading. That being said, there is always someone new in the comment section that will see a strategy that I'm talking about and explain how it won't work because the stock and the industry that they're trading in has an overall downward direction. A lot of people get this victim mentality when the stock market is going down or when the sector that they love is trending down. Like, oh, well, it's going down, so I can't trade anymore. That is complete BS. Why would you not be able to trade? There's just as many options going down as there are going up. And the strategy in number one can simply be flipped to provide the strategy in number two, which is to take advantage of downtrending stocks. Although I should make the point that regardless of the market condition, there are always going to be certain niches and certain subsectors that are composed of stocks and ETFs that do have a consistent uptrending pattern. There's always those market outliers, just like in a bull market, there's always stocks that are going down in certain sectors as well. So while you could just choose to focus on those, there's also this opportunity to take advantage of stocks that are going down. So number two is shorting stocks that have a consistent downtrending pattern. Just like a consistent uptrend helps in terms of direction when buying stocks, a consistent downtrend helps as well. This is simply the same idea in reverse and is a very powerful way of making money when the overall market is trending down as well as just if your individual stock is going down. So let me give you an example of how to take advantage of a stock with a consistent downtrending pattern. So Tesla, for example, now not only has the pattern of overbuying and overselling, but this overall direction downwards gives us the advantage, the advantage that we could take in shorting this position at overbought and then covering it oversold. Very simple strategy, very clear cut. You could see that every single time on this chart, if you had taken a position a short position at Tesla at overbought, you would have made money by simply covering it oversold. And this is in large part not just due to the comeback pattern of Tesla, but rather the overall downward direction of the stock. 
much like you have the odds more in your favor when you're buying a consistently uptrending stock, you also have the odds in your favor when you are shorting a consistently downtrending stock. By the way, if you would like to learn more information on how shorting works as well as how to implement it into your trading strategy, I did make a video on this a couple weeks ago and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And this brings me to number three. Number three is to buy stocks that have just suffered from a massive decrease due to some sort of horrible news. This is taking advantage of top losers. I don't mean the biggest losers because that's referring to something different. I mean the top losers. It's no secret that I love top losers. Every reaction to news events is an overreaction and top losers such as Isney provide a massive downward overreaction. Now, I should mention that just because something is an overreaction, that does not mean that it's not justified. But it does mean that in the short run, every time we see a massive hit, we will see a later recovery of a certain percentage. Do stocks continue trending down? Absolutely. Do stocks continue trending down without ever having any sort of correction upwards? Very unlikely. For example, while Isney got handed a 70% loss yesterday, today was a huge winner. Buying in upon confirmation and riding SMA price strength would have garnered over a 20% return this morning. And also we just saw another confirmation as I took this video. But the point that I'm making is that buying top losers upon confirmation can provide us with a massive amount of upside. The key though is not just buying top losers, but making sure that we are seeing signs of an uptrend with that confirmation. We always want confirmation, folks. And of course, we aren't just holding and hoping. We need to always have a plan because these are stocks that may just continue going down. Just because it's bad news doesn't mean that price decrease is unjustified. It just means that in the moment, it's an overreaction. Our job is to buy in specifically to take advantage of the price strength and appreciation and then exit upon validation. Validation of a downtrend. Buy in at confirmation, sell out at validation. And I'll do this every single day. I'll compile a list like clockwork of all the biggest losers and then these are the stocks that I'm going to be watching the next day. They're not all the stocks, but these are a sector of the stocks that I'm going to be watching. And the reason for this is because some of the biggest losers from the previous day end up being some of the biggest winners in the next day. While they very rarely recover their losses, they do recover a certain percentage of them because they were an overreaction. And of course, on this particular list, Isney was one of the ones that had made it. But just looking at this list from this one particular day, we do see a few more examples. NBY was a top loser yesterday, losing half its value, but today it's up 185% providing beautiful entry and exit points and price strength as well. Would I have recommended trading this on any other day? Probably not because it was low volume the rest of the year. But because I was able to identify that it was a top loser, this was something that I had been able to put on my watch list and was something I'd be able to identify. So the point is keeping track of top losers will allow you the ability to take advantage of upward corrections and significantly boost the amount of money that you make while trading in the stock market. But in any case, before we move on to the next one, I don't buy stocks just because they've been beaten down. A common analogy that I like to use is that you're buying a stock just because it was beat down is sort of like buying a sick and dying animal on the side of the road. Just doesn't make a good pet. Thus you need, you absolutely need to see signs of a recovery and most importantly, an intraday confirmation of a recovery. Okay, great, number four. Number four is to pick an inverse ETF pair and nail down the movements. A lot of folks find that focusing on leveraged ETFs allow them to really get an intuitive feel for the underlying price action within them. This in turn allows them to be more consistently profitable. For example, LabU and LabD are some of my favorites. They often provide a series of clean runups over the SMA line, which is extremely important, by the way, for measuring price strength and weakness in a consistent way. All the other methods seem to be kind of foofy in my opinion. But the point is that LabU provides all of these opportunities and when LabU is bearish, its inverse LabD provides the price action that we need in order to take advantage of the clean run-ups as well. So picking an inverse pair that provides preferable price action and volatility and then mainly focusing on that is an excellent way to make money trading. Okay, so number five is sort of the cookie cutter strategy of Zip Trader. In fact, if you wanted to, you could even YouTube search Zip Trader pattern and then this video would come up first. I've talked about this one so often, but it is perhaps one of the most straightforward and easy ways to earn a consistent amount of profit trading. And this is none other than the comeback king pattern, the pattern of overbuying and overselling during the same time period. The reason that this pattern is so beautiful is because you buy when it's oversold and then just simply hold until it's overbought. Waha! And then you can repeat this over and over again. But the key is finding the right pattern and of course buying only upon signs of an uptrend. Confirmation, folks. But I do want to clear up a common misconception with this and the common misconception is that the comeback pattern has to have this bouncing ball form of support and resistance but that is just simply not the case. Obviously, I love the bouncing ball as much as the next trader, but you just need to find stocks that have a history of overselling and then recovering to overbought again and again, such as we see with GE. 
And it also doesn't even necessarily have to be a swing trade. We find these plays intradays as well. Buying QCOM at literally any point on the specific day where it reaches oversold and then simply holding it until the next overbought would have been a good play. So you can find these by simply scanning for stocks that have a history of doing this and then adding them to your watch list. And then when they do it again, cha-ching. So in summary, way number five is to simply identify stocks that have a history of being oversold and then overbought again and again during the time period that you are looking to trade them. Okay, number six. Number six is you simply go on a website such as Biopharma Catalyst and write down all of the stocks and dates at which FDA approvals and phase data releases will be coming out. I of course make videos every single month where I personally do this and I go through all the picks, but let's just assume that you don't wanna watch these videos because Charlie's a weird dude. You could just go on the website, scroll through the list and compile all of the tickers. Then you could add all of these to your watch list along with the dates they will be having the price changing news. On the days leading up to it and the days after, you could follow everything that's happening and look for entry and exit points. And the key is that phase data releases and FDA approvals will almost always provide price action before or after the announcement, if not both. And it's even more volatile of a reaction for smaller cap stocks. And understanding when volatility will occur can give you a huge head start on planning how to handle said stock. And there are tons of opportunities. Some of the ones we covered in our penny stocks videos were ADMA, EVOC, and SCYX. And they have huge amounts of volatility regardless of whether or not the news is positive. But you can of course take this a step further by doing your own due diligence on each company. Coming up with a hypothesis based on insider trades, news coverage, previous FDA results, and whatever else you can find in order to form a hypothesis on whether the FDA announcement will be positive or negative. This hypothesis will then serve to give you an extra edge for when you are trading off of that price action. We know that late stage FDA approvals have an 80% chance of getting passed, and we can further estimate the probability of success by looking more into the companies and their past with the FDA. But we're not necessarily in the business of guessing positive FDA results, rather we're in the business of trading. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take this hypothesis and then match it to see if there's a pattern confirmation. Does the price action display any sign that investors feel the same way that you do. Can you use your hypothesis to trade the price action and look for signs of confirmation in order to make a profit off the volatility? So the key is not just buying in based on an educated guess, but rather focusing on the underlying price action. And even if they have an FDA loss, which is honestly just as good in my opinion, um, then that will be an opportunity for you to buy in at a discount because that'll be an overreaction. Okay, so number seven. Now, number seven is perhaps one of the most important ways to make money trading. And honestly, this is not so much to make more money, but rather to protect the money that you already have by not overtrading. Do not allow yourself to overtrade. The idea behind number seven is that you are making money simply by not losing the money that you already have. If there is a day where you do not see setups and volatility that warrant taking a trade, simply do not trade that day. You are not required to trade every single day, and oftentimes the best trades are the trades that are not taken. As Robert Frost is famous for saying, there are two trades, two trades that diverged in the woods. He, he took the trade less traveled by, and that, that made all the difference. And in this case, the trade less traveled by was no trade. So do not take a trade if there's no opportunities. But not having a trade does not mean that you should just sit back in your chair and smile like a wimpy dog. You need to be proactive so that this doesn't happen to you again. A lot of people have this weird idea that there's days where there's no opportunities in the stock market. That's ridiculous. Even in a market that's not moving up or down, there's many different sectors that do. If you're not seeing any opportunities, the problem is you. If you are day after day not finding good setups, you're going to need to broaden your skill base. The market is full of opportunities, but you do need to know where to look. This may mean, based on the market climate, adjusting your focus from tech stocks to biotech, or adjusting from marijuana stocks to 5G stocks. Anywhere that provides you a predictable amount of volatility, that's where you're going to want to be. This is a much better alternative than just simply overtrading setups that don't warrant trading in the first place. So in summary, if you are consistently not finding the best setups, do not overtrade. It simply means that it's time to adjust your knowledge base of different markets and different niches that you can then trade that do offer opportunities and setups. Absolutely 100% do not attempt to trade in a market condition or niche that you do not feel comfortable in. But use this time to practice so that in the future you will feel comfortable and you won't be left sitting in your seat like a dog. There's tons of these sort of spiritual gurus who are like, oh, I'm not going to trade today. I'm one with the market. I'm one with the market. Like, no, you're not one with the market. You're just not looking at the opportunities that are in front of you. There are a ton of folks who make a good living trading primarily ETFs such as natural gas and gold. But during certain times of the year and certain market conditions, these just don't move as much. That's the nature of them. Thus, it's very important to take a diversified approach to trading and be open to new markets instead of forcing trades to occur 
and ones that aren't providing reasonable price action for you. An unofficial eighth way to make money trading is to simply join a group of other traders and discuss all of the best opportunities with them. We have a great community of a little bit over 8,000 people on the Zip Trader Circle Facebook group. I post nightly watch lists, but most importantly, our members post their own watch lists and cover all the top stocks that they see value in. I think they provide more value than I do, but I'm happy to set it up for you. And we also have a Discord chat as well. I'll put links to both in the description below. Of course, we also have a trading tutorials playlist if you need more help in terms of walking you through the process of trading. Anyways, have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.